Hi, this is John Haas. It is April 6, 2020, day 6 in the 30-day shelter-in-place orders. Today I had a peculiar thought. I thought about the uh, phenomenon of calling the COVID-19 epidemic pandemic a war and that we're at wartime. And I thought almost in a childlike way, well, that's wrong. This isn't a war. This isn't battles and armies and shooting and that thing that we all think of when we hear the, the word war. But then the grown-up in me, as opposed to the childlike thinking, thought, well, it is a war. There is a battle going on. There is a unseen enemy. And we all are all in a kind of war of uh, how do you put it? Home on the home front, doing our duties like they did in World War II with rationing and mobilizing industries to produce military equipment. In this case, to produce the ammunition against the virus and the particular, particularly the the disease the virus can cause with. The ventilator as the valued piece of, of equipment. But I was also thinking that it, it's a this is a peculiar war in that this isn't like World War Two, people rationing and mobilizing. This is not like the Depression where. They went on for years, and the devastation to the economy and to families and individuals is profound and long-lasting. This isn't 9-11, where the shock of the uh, horror, you know, was visceral and lasted a few days and weeks and... Uh, kind of forever um, answered one of those questions about where were we when we heard about it, just like I remember where I was when Kennedy was shot. But no, this is peculiar in that I think there are, are people, I, I don't know how many, who have thought, well, what if this is the end of the world. What if this, and not just some doomsday religious cult, cult uh, belief, but what if it actually is that the virus goes away for a while and comes back and it just never goes away completely and it eventually wipes out the human race? That's the worst case scenario. And I, and I think it would be normal for it to flash through someone's mind. The other thought somebody, that many people would have is, what if I get it? What will my symptoms be? Will they be mild? Will uh, I lose my life for some some unforeseen reasons? Not being someone with underlying conditions, but still, you know, as they say, a lot of men in Italy and in the United States in their 30s. In 40s, we're getting it disproportionately, so there's not really any rhyme or reason to, to some of the um, uh, people that uh, are infected. Lastly, I would like to discuss what is always of most interest to me, which is the the present moment of this crisis, what is it like to contemplate or meditate in the present moment and to 
absorb the uh, the continued wealth and mi miracle of 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 life and of of the earth and the changing of the seasons and the tremendous beauty that knows is oblivious the birds singing they're oblivious to this yet it is actually from nature this uh, virus it's an actual na natural bug and um, it's just unfortunate that it happens to have these serious consequences of what happens when a person's infected and that it also has this very robust uh, contagi contagiousness. And I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted to say that I'd be interested to know how people look at before this happened and and after this happened and or, and while this happened there, there's going to be three distinct uh, periods that people are going to think about and talk about one what was life like before this happened and i think there's going to be a lot of nostalgia for that period of sense of almost of innocence despite our lack of innocence and despite other problems they pale now in comparison to this. And then, most interestingly, what will it be like after it's over? After the country is, quote, open again and people can go to restaurants without fear of, of, of uh, catching the virus. What will it be like, packed uh, baseball stadiums and parties and I think at first there w there will be a lot of parties, a lot of partying, and I think that will go on for for several weeks when when the sort of all clear bell is rung, and then I think people are going to live differently, and I think people are going to somehow never lose the effects of this lockdown and this. Uh, moment of history that they're going to be forever affected some tainted by it some made better by it some made worse by it but everyone is going to be affected by it in ways little and small and right now as we speak probably there's somebody writing the great american novel or a contender for the great american novel about this and there'll be movies about it and it's going to go on for the rest of all all of our lives not not the the crisis but the, the ramifications and the ripple effect of this coronavirus pandemic so uh how many days do we have left so if it's day six we've got 24 days left that sounds not too bad huh talk to you tomorrow